after constantly hearing this word wait I think it's pretty obvious what the exhortation will be I want to exhort you concerning this word to wait for him this waiting on salvation waiting for things to be completed waiting for things to be received waiting for things to be seen more clearly there's three key passages I want to share with you and exhorting you with this and like what's involved in our waiting things that like help with this the first one's in Romans chapter 8 verse 24 and 25 concerning why wh why we wait what's the motivation we have it says for we are saved by hope but hope that is seen is not hope for what a man seeth why doth he yet hope for but if we hope for that we see not then we do with patience wait for it there's that word and of course no one's gonna uh, the exhortation to wait really doesn't mean anything unless there's some kind of motivation offered there. You see, I mean, like, just saying, like, wait, wait, that's, you know, it, it's good to hear that, but there has to be some reason behind it. Why do you wait? Well, the Lord has provided his people with a hope, promised an inheritance, promised eternal life, promised freedom from suffering, freedom from sin. I mean, there's, like, a whole host of things here that we can look forward to, something that's going to be completed in the divine objectives. He's provided us a sure and a lively hope that we can anticipate. No need to doubt. God has gone on record. He's not a liar. We know it's going to happen. Any laborer will work harder if he knows he's going to be rewarded for his labor. I mean, yeah, you can go up to any, anyone working anywhere and just say, you need to work harder, you need to work faster. But, you know, if you hold that reward out, then, hey, you might get some better results. I really do think you would. Likewise, we have a reward waiting for us when the Lord returns. So we focused on the end on this end so that we can get through the present evil world this shows the danger of focusing on the present only getting caught up in circumstances if there's no hope it will not be long before those in turmoil will give up and drop out of the race keep your focus brethren and know what's coming for you see to it if the lord's offered you a hope see what he said well what is what is coming for me what is the lord like what is the lord doing like what's happening up on the horizon here i want to know what that is and then this word like wait will have strength. You will be able to act more on these words. Look forward, never backward. Now the next passage I have is in Galatians chapter 5 verse 5. And in this part I'm like waiting involves like some kind of assistance. It says, "For we through the spirit wait for the hope of righteousness by faith." Now waiting like that involves patience. That's one thing. It also like involves endurance, making it through struggling. And the Spirit helps us with both. The Spirit, He helps you understand. He provides you with what you need to survive the journey. So as you wait, you can provide like a helper to help you get through, to help you be able to stand and progress. So the exhortation there would be by no means quench the Spirit. Don't grieve the Spirit, as the Scriptures say, because He's there for a reason. He's there to help. He's here to keep you standing and keep you moving. And, in this test, keep you in a state where you can wait, endure, have patience. Submit to God so that he can work in you. Lastly, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10, this, is, this I'll bring to your attention, deliverance, which was mentioned in Brother Tony's sermon, saying, To wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Another reason we wait is so that we can be delivered. Now, in this passage, it says we've been delivered from the wrath to come, and that's true. No one in Christ is going to perish. But that's the thing. Abiding in Christ is the key there. No man who departs from the shelter is safe from the storm. So we abide in Christ, knowing that if we do so, we will not perish. So the emphasis there would be like, where you wait? Of course, like if you see a man on top of a roof and you say, like, what are you doing? He's like, I'm waiting for the storm to come. How foolish would this look? Get, sh get the shelter now. If you know something's on the horizon, you want to be in a place of safety. And Christ is that place that God's given us as a place of safety. A place where we could stay and dwell and abide. Yes. So we wait in Christ a place of provision and safety for those who believe. So I want you to remember that hope that you have. Focus on it. Do not grieve the help that God's given you. And stay in a place where you will not be harmed by the wicked one. Those are my exhortations to you. Thank you, Brother Tony. We'll open now for your comments.